Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to wrap up this installation part and we are going to do that by setting up our tools for Windows. I left Windows for last because I knew it was going to be problematic and I was not disappointed. Now if you're a Windows user, hence why I have this video, sorry about that if you find Windows easy to use but I find Windows frustrating. And it's not because I'm a Mac user. Before I used Mac, I used to use Linux. And before Linux, I used to use Windows for years. And so one of the reasons I left Windows is because I found Unix so awesome to use. And I use a Mac because I still like my Unix-like environments. Anyway, enough about that. But I'll still have plenty of time to lament and complain along the way because especially when we get to the C++ installation. So forgive me up front, but it was just frustrating to get stuff going. So let's jump into it and get this stuff going. All right, so for any um, environment, you, the installation is gonna be pretty much the same, which is you go to the um, this websites for the tools and it, most likely they offer tools for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And here I'm gonna get Git for Windows, even though I have Git already installed, but, and then I go do the same thing for Golang. And once I download the executable, if it's available, that's the easiest way to go. Now, if you have the tool installed and the version up, up to date, then you're gonna find for things like Go and Python, it's gonna say that, oh, well, you sort of have everything. Do you wanna repair this installation or modify it? And in that case, it then just cancel out. For Java, um, you go to the Oracle website. Again, we're using the link from the Mac installation because all the links are there, but you're gonna see the links below this video for Windows. And so I'm gonna accept and then download the uh, Java um, setup for Windows and run that and go through the installation. Again, um, pretty straightforward. Same thing for Git, for Golang, for Python, um, for, for Java here. Scala is gonna be the same thing. It just download the executable and then it go through the, the setup again. I have it, so I cancel out. When I go to download Groovy, I see there's a Windows installer. So I opted for that instead of the zip file which is the binary distribution which would require me to extract it and put it in place and all this other stuff well doing this um in my case i'm running this out of a virtual machine so i didn't have enough space so i'm gonna delete some stuff and free up some space and then i will continue installation but while i'm installing it it tells me that oh you don't have java home set and so to do that um we're gonna remember that oh, we have to set java home because it says it might not work if we don't so um, that's easy to do. I'm gonna go find where my Java installation um, was installed. My Java was installed, I can't remember where, but here it is. And once I find it, I'm gonna select the bin direct, the directory um, above bin, copy it, and then go to my computer advanced settings. And um, here I'm gonna modify the environmental variable for the system variable. It sort of doesn't matter where you put it in system or user, but I'm putting it in system. And so I created a new variable called Java home, set it to that path. And then I copied the Java, um, the user environmental path variable, because it contains a number of other paths and it's just easier to edit in an editor um, or change or modify in an editor. So I copied it. In this case, since I had Visual Studio installed already, I use Visual Studio. But if you don't have Visual Studio installed, you'd use Notepad or whatever text editor you have. I paste that. And I go to the beginning because I want Java to be picked up above anything else that might have been installed. So I put that in, in the beginning. And note for Windows, you have to use this percent sign, um, strong the, the variable name. And so now I'm pointing to my Java home. And then I want to say, um, use the bin directory in my Java home. So not only do I need the Java home variable set so that something like Groovy can find it, but I also need to say, bin directory. Then I copy this now, modify environmental variable value, and I put it back in place, and I confirm that I have the correct thing by going to the beginning of that value, and I see that our, um, Java Home is there. Now it's time to install Visual Studio. Again, I had Visual Studio installed, so, but again, download the executable and run it. When it comes to installing C++, this is so painful in Windows, I can lament a lot, and I'm saving you a lot of time because what I did was I follow this link that says, here, if you do this, you can um, have command line um, access to C++, and that's the key, C++ only. Instead, what I did is I went to um, minggw.org and download their installer, 
install it and then once that was finished I started it up and here I couldn't decide whether I should install for all users but it didn't give me options to do all users but anyway I just selected the default continued and let that install back to my main GW installation manager and I selected here once you click on entries you can mark it for installation so I did the C++ one and the base tool which install install the C compiler then I say apply changes and had some coffee and come back and then everything installed I quit the installation manager and no, I know how this was installed because Ming-G is installed to my C directory and I check, I see all the C, C++, GCC tool. But I cannot run them from the command line yet because this Ming-G bin is not in my path. So I copy this variable and then um, went back again to my program properties, my system properties, and add that to my user path and this time I don't care about putting it first so I just stuck it at the end so I put a semicolon and just paste it and apply exit my bash prompt get bash prompt and come back in and notice now that Visual Studio code works and also I have to navigate myself to the C directory where I had created the learn computer programming directory LCP and I had cloned programming Landry compare from the git repository now right now there isn't anything in there other than the slide, but I cloned it anyway. And in that directory, I created a simple example and I tested it from the command line and it works. Then I went into Visual Studio Code, wrote a simple C program. And again, um, what I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that this works. And you can see that it's working. The thing I'm using to run it is the run code plugin. So if you want to test it the way I've done, do install the run code plugin but that's it after a whole lot of work that um, I didn't show you about installing Visual Studio uh, Visual C++ 2017 and what I tried to do to get it to work to work I spare you all of that wasted a good hour of my time and downloaded like two gigs of data um, I finally have the open source MingGW installation with C and C++ compilers and that's working all right so that seemed a little fast, but I want to make this as speedy as possible and not waste your time. And so hopefully if you are a very familiar with Windows environment and you have Visual C++ already, you can make it work, um, then great. If not, I suggest with the Microsoft tools, great. If not, I suggest you use MingGW instead. All right. So now all our tools are installed. The only thing left for us to do is make sure we all have the same set of plugins. And once we do that, then we can actually start comparing some languages. See you in the next video. Definitely follow me on Twitter um, so you can see when I post new things. Um, I'll try to make the, the tweets a little bit more interesting and the Instagram posts a little bit more interesting in the future. But right now I simply post when I um, just make a tweet or Instagram, whatever you call that, uh, whenever I post a new video. So if you're following there and you didn't get to your um, your YouTube, you can at least know something was posted and then you can go jump on YouTube. All right, um, thumbs up the video, please. And subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Definitely, please keep spreading the word. I appreciate that and I do appreciate your time. Take care, see you soon.